The increase um, in the use of cloud services within education is really down, I think, to two main factors. First of all, the increasing economical challenges currently being faced by institutions. And secondly, um, the development and the advances in technology and what that now offers us. On a personal basis, we use cloud computing um, all the time without even realising it when we access our Gmail or Hotmail and when we upload content to Facebook, YouTube and so on. And on an institutional basis, there are undoubtedly advantages to be had in adopting the cloud. Um, in cost terms, you're using a pay-as-you-go-on-demand type system of use. Um, the cloud provider is managing maintenance upgrades. Um, and there's a general uh, increase in flexibility. You have this anytime, anywhere access. And we know there are institutions already um, who have adopted the cloud and are making good use of it, both in terms of um, the financial um, side of things and operational uh, terms as well. And it's crucial, therefore, that we don't want the legal issues to get in the way of that innovative use. And that's where the GISC legal webcast comes in. What we want to do throughout the webcast is really to address three main questions. Firstly, what legal risks do colleges and universities face in adopting the cloud? And what steps can they take to meet those risks in order to avoid liability and so on? And why comply with the law? The webcast really for anyone who has an interest in cloud computing, but it's probably going to be most beneficial for those who are responsible for the delivery of cloud services and indeed those who make the decision whether to and how to adopt the cloud. There are a variety of legal areas that will be relevant in cloud computing and we address those in more detail in our GISC legal toolkit on cloud computing and the law and that's available on the website for you to have a look at. In the webcast we're going to focus more on data protection law and in particular we're going to look at who's responsible for compliance, how to protect privacy, how to manage cookies, what security measures will be required and how to ensure lawful transfer of personal data out with the EEA, the European Economic Area. Um, we also have some scenarios that we'll work through looking at the different models um, of adoption, whether the cloud services, the platform, the infrastructure itself or a piece of software. And as always, um, we, we allow our users the opportunity to send live questions to us uh, in the studio. Uh, it's always great to have questions live on the day. It focuses the issues um, and it makes um, things a bit more interesting for those participating. Um, so all you really need to have is access to an internet connection uh, at 2 o'clock on the 30th of May. There's no need to register. If you want to read up on the legal issues, have a look at the GISC Legal Toolkit. Um, and I very much hope you'll be able to join us um, at 2 o'clock on the 30th of May.